Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Dorm and Lunch and Learn. Today's subject, diagnosing a vehicle that has multiple DTCs. I'm your instructor, G. Trulia. Let's go on and look at what we're going to be doing. What will be covered? We're going to utilize the Launch Throttle 3 scan tool using its advanced features to uncover multiple DTCs. We're going to do a health check, a system scan, OE side of the scan tool. We're also going to look at the generic OBD2 side. Now, Oscar Gomez, he struck her out in California. He put something on Facebook to ask people just to see what their answers would be, and they were all over the place. If you're on Facebook, go check Oscar Gomez out and see what people are saying about what we should do. I'm going to tell you what you really should do in diagnosing this stuff, and it should be a game plan that you need to make. Scan data, graphing data, and much, much more, okay? So we're gonna look at this tool here, the Launch Throttle 3, and we also have a couple of deals through Launch, and this is not a sales pitch, okay? I, we use Launch scan tools in our shop for years. I have the old monochrome stream, and we still have the new color screens like this Throttle 3 here. Great tool. And I just want you to see what can be an alternative. Now, of course, there's other tools out there as well that are great. But today we're using this one. You've seen me use other brands as well. I'm going to show you with today's scan tool what we're doing. We're going to do this particular scan here. You can see the topography. The topography is pretty cool. This comes in handy when you got network problems. So we're not going to stay much on this. There's not a bunch of stuff here. We're going to do it live. Let's do it and do it live. So we're going to go over to the scan tool. Now you're going to get a good view of the scan tool here. And when we're on the scan tool, you're going to see the throttle three. We have diagnose, I am readiness, voltage checks, report, software update, all this stuff here. Well, one of the things we would like to do is let's do a voltage check. The humming noise you hear in the background Anytime that I do a webinar, I have a maintainer on. The maintainer, if you'd show them the associated maintainer there, that's the little buzzing noise you hear in the background, okay? That is the noise that you hear. We need to maintain the battery voltage. So let's do a voltage check. Notice the voltage check here. We are showing, and if we record this, we could hit clear, we could hit start, now it's going to connect to the vehicle and it is going to basically give us the voltage. And watch when I start it up, you can see the voltage. You see that, that bar right there, the graph going across on the purple, went down a little bit to the white area. Now I'm going to start it up and take a look at it. Take a look at it. I'm going to put my foot on the brake here. Now you see how that went down, then went up, okay? So now we know the charging system is, is working as well. So you can see a couple of little dips there, right? Key back on. So the graph is coming across. You know, when you're seeing the screen blink out, that's because it's starting and it pulls it down, that's normal. But when you look at it, you had a high of almost 14. That's that middle part of the graph. I can't point to it, but you can see the peak that went up, okay? And what you have here is a way to look at, and if you record it, you can record all that. We're gonna stop the recording. It's a good thing to do just to make sure that you have proper voltage, okay? So now I'm gonna go out of here and I'm gonna to go to I am readiness. Now, I am readiness is very, very important. This is, even if you're in a non-emission state, having me log in to the tool, I guess. And here we're gonna to connect to the vehicle. And I am readiness is gonna give us our monitor status. When a monitor is not ready, it may not give us a DTC. So this is real good. You notice we got misfire, fuel system. 
comprehensive component. You all know what misfire is, right? That could be something from the crank sensor, it could be something from ignition or fuel related, or maybe even EGR related. Anything that affects the way the engine runs, including mechanical. Fuel system, that is the injectors and so on, right? But what's comprehensive component? Write this down if you don't know what CCM is, Comprehensive Component Monitor. A comprehensive component monitor is every sensor and actuator on the vehicle, with the exception of oxygen sensor heater, oxygen sensor itself, the catalyst, EGR or VVT, uh, secondary air, and EVAP. You'll never see air condition, not just yet, now. It was originally made for R12, but who knows? They could reenact it with pressure sensors that are on today's vehicles to see if you have refrigerant in there. Maybe for 134A, global warming, you know, right? Or maybe it could be for 1234YF, a very expensive refrigerant, and who knows what's coming down the road. Now, you notice catalyst, EVAP, O2, there's no secondary air. O2 heater and EGR, all good. If you get a report, Here's the report, and I'm going to have that report right here to show someone, look, your monitors were all ready. It tells me we got DTCs, what's supported, what's unsupported. Really good to do, and I do like that they have it. Every vehicle, 1996 and up, the monitors should really read like this, okay? It should be misfire fuel comprehensive component they're always pretty much ready to to be set per se if you're a GM tech and you used the tech 2 you would notice you never seen them why because they always say they're ready the word ready is not really important for that it should be work in progress it's always looking for something now the other monitors are have to be ready once a trip right they must be ready, and the only thing that makes them unready, if you clear the DTCs or kill the battery, right? Or clear the system out. So this is a good thing here to have. We're gonna go back, and we're gonna go into the regular scan tool part, okay? So I'm gonna hit diagnose. We're gonna do auto detect. And auto detect is gonna basically go through the vehicle, and show us what's going on, right? It should come up with the VIN number. I always like looking at at least the last four of the VIN. And right here, we got 3314 if you want to take the last six. And this car has 3314. We're all good. It is the correct car. Why do you care about the correct vehicle? Well, hey, if you're doing any programming or coding, it's important to make sure you have the right vehicle selected. I'm going to hit diagnose now. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we have a choice here. We're going to go with 16 pin connector and we're going to hit automatic search. Now it tells me, you know, automatic search is going to look for it or you can collect, select manually. USA area, I'm going to select that. I'm, we're in the US. And it tells me here, there's that VIN again. It's a 1.6 liter. It is GDI, gasoline direct injection. And we hit OK. Now, I want you to look at the bottom. You got health report, system scan, select detection. So we're going to first do a health report. And I want you to take notice how this whole topography is going to fill in. I slid it up. On the bottom, you got ECM, TCM. You got KWP keyword protocol down there. You got CAN1 is the original one, CAN2, and then you got CAN3. So let's do health report. Now, when you're doing a health report, sometimes it takes a little bit. Look at the topography. Green is normal. Red is abnormal. A couple of them came up. And this is the one I would basically tell you to utilize, okay? Because as you're seeing here, we are filling in where there is a problem. Now, you can see the little yellow bar going across the screen to the different modules. You see the red bar up top filling up. 
You should also notice our battery voltage is maintaining at 3.44 and there above. Okay. And now we're down near the end. I'm going to move the screen up. And we just pulled in another code there. And we got a couple of codes. Now, we could get the whole report. And this report would come up. It's saving the report. You can email this. This is being emailed to me. There's all my information, my company, my email address. And you can mail it to the consumer. Now, we always mail it to the shop, and then we attach this to AutoLeap, uh, our shop management system, and it goes to our customer. That way, we have everything together. But using this tool, if you don't have a shop management system that does that, you can send it right from here. And notice we have... Two ECM problems, airbag problems, four-wheel drive problem, occupant problem, and it looks like the rest is good. So you can share, you can save, you can QR code, you can do all of that. Pretty neat. We're going to get out of here, and we are going to go back one and do system scan now. Now, remember what we just had. You came up with some red boxes. Health report in my opinion, is a better thing to run than system scan. So let's take a look at that. And here system scan is going through. Now you see it's just telling you things are scanned. It ain't coming up with a red box. So any of these launch products that have this, this is something that you need to be aware of. Why? Because if you pick this, maybe you have your young tech doing this, and they really pick the wrong button and make a report out of it. I'm going to show you what the report looks like as well. So right now we're down to the CAN2 system. And this is great when you do have a bus problem. Okay, this vehicle does not. This vehicle is a customer's car here with actually a great pro problem. But notice we have no ECM, TCM stuff here. So if you look at it, it just told you it was system scanned. Now, if I went into this ECM and I enter it, it's going to tell me all the stuff here. Do I want to read fault codes? I can read it, okay? But isn't it nicer to the other way where we had a report? We can do this whole report just to let you see what it looks like. And you would not want to do what I just did here in my shop. You'd want to do the previous step, okay? The pre previous step is what you'd want to do. Now, if you went in with a diagnostic plan, look at this. You hit the diagnostic plan, and this is something nice. You go online help and watch what comes up. It gives you a general description it tells us if the sensor signal input is higher than 4.95, ECM sets that. Possible causes, poor connection, open or short to power in the signal, open in the ground circuit, okay? Now, this is important. When you see system voltage high, okay, and notice that it says circuit high input, circuit high input, you definitely want to know that circuit high, write this down, circuit high means an open, okay? So there's an open circuit. Now, this could be a broken wire. It could be VD, voltage drop at a connection that nothing can get through. Circuit voltage low, write this down, is usually a short. Circuit voltage low is something pulling that voltage signal down. And on a 5-volt reference signal, you may have other sensors being pulled down as well. Don't be fast to pull the trigger and order a new part. That may, in most cases, not be the problem. It says circuit. Let's take a look here. I'm going to go around and show you what I did for this code. All the other codes on the car are real, but I am going to take this and show you what we got here. So you see that right there? We have an open circuit. We have an open circuit right there to prove that the tool could actually pick it up. And I wanted to show you the diagnostic help, okay? 
that this is online. It's a special package that is available through launch and they have some other help as well, but I'm just showing you that here now. I don't want to make this a commercial, okay? So now let's go into generic OBD2. Let's get out of Hyundai and we'll come back to this end in a minute, but let's take a look at just going into OBD2. Okay, we're gonna pick the latest version and we're gonna load this up. Now you got 10 modes of OBD2. 10 modes of OBD2 is important to know. Now here it gave us the VIN number, 3314, that's the same, the mill is on. DTCs in this ECU are two. Readiness completed are eight. Readiness not completed, zero. Isn't this the better place to start? Yeah, you could check this out right away, give this to your customer, and actually see that you have all the monitors ready or not ready. In New York State here, we have to go through an inspection test. Now, there's only about 28 emission states in the country. Some of you don't need to do that and go, ah, that's not important. Yes, it is. You got the you suck light. The you suck light is the check engine light. When that customer brings their vehicle in and you supposedly fix their problem, let's say it's an O2 sensor, you never check monitors. Well, the O2 sensor that you fixed, you didn't notice that the catalyst monitor wasn't ready, right? You fix it and now it's ready. It's ready to look around, right? When it's ready to look around, so when readiness is not set, it's going to come back up with the light coming back on. Why? Because it's ready to see the issue. Now this is in generic OBD2. We showed you before doing a full system scan. Highly recommend that because you could have airbag problems like this has. You could have an ABS problem or something else. This is for engine and transmission for emission purposes. For drivability, car hesitates, the vehicle has this issue, you know, with uh, a check engine light, we want to go into generic OBD2. It is for drivability and check engine light problems. So we can see the whole thing here. It tells us the protocol on the CAN bus. We're going to hit enter. And there is mode one our readiness status. We're not going to go there. We also see mode one is live data. We are going to go there. We're going to look at freeze frame. Freeze frame is important, mode two. Now, when you look at freeze frame here, we can go down the list, and something super important here is we have the accelerator pedal position, okay? You have that information there. You step on the pedal. You definitely want to see something happening here, okay? So let me put this on graph. Let's make sure the scan tool communicates. So we can look at barometric pressure, very, very important barometric pressure. We're at 14.7, okay? That is important. Calculated load, calculated load at a wide open throttle at sea level should at least hit 90%. Let me see if we could start this up and take a peek at this, okay? So now we got all of these things here. Let's look at that absolute load value. Let's take a look at calculated load and graph it. And notice I just selected one PID. One PID would give us the highest update rate on the scan tool. So now I'm going to start it up. I'm going to try to go pedal to the metal real quick. Remember we're here. Okay, so that hit okay. We got some notes here. I got to hit the scan tool. This is a real deal that happens in your shop. It's below 11 volts. It didn't like something that it's seen. Now you see how that raced up? But am I hitting 90%? No, and the reason why I'm not hitting 90% is 
I am racing it up and you have a rev limiter. What you need to do is take it about a car length or more, okay? That is to make sure that you can hit wide open throttle at 90%. Here, we're only roughly about 60 some odd percent, okay? So we don't want that. We don't want that at all. So now let's go back and we saw mode one, freeze frame, when did it happen? Freeze frame is important. It means it's taking a snapshot of when something occurred. So right here, we could see all the information on freeze frame. It was 59 degrees. The throttle command was 8.67%. The DTC was 108 on the freeze frame. The coolant temperature was 62 degrees. And the RPM was zero. That's when I made that open circuit. Okay, so it's important to get freeze frame data because if you are trying to test this thing at high RPM, it didn't happen at high RPM. It didn't happen at high vehicle speed, okay? This is the way to look at how to diagnose that. Let's go back and take another look here. Read fault codes. Now, this is important. You got mode three, mode seven, and mode zero A. Mode zero A, write this down, otherwise known as mode 10. Starting back in 2010, if someone clears the DTC, okay, if they clear that out, you know what's gonna happen? Well, if it was before 2010, you couldn't find out why the code set or what code set. 2010 and up, you cannot erase that. Only the vehicle can erase it. You can disconnect the battery, you can use your scan tool, not gonna erase the code in mode 0A slash 10. Okay, so let's take a look. So here we got these 113s, it's current. You can see that, okay? And 108. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. So here's code search. So code search, look at that, puts you right on Google to look for stuff and how to test it. We'll go back. That is one good thing that you could actually utilize. So we're gonna get out of that. Code assist. Let's see what they come up with. This is the barometric circuit high. And then let's go to X431 fix. This is something that is an extra charge on the unit, but it is pretty cool and better on certain things. Now, it goes out and it is going to search this whole database on his car. Diagnostic trouble codes, two of them. And manifold absolute pressure circuit high. You click on it. It is going to give you all the information, where it's at. Look at this, where it's at. And you could actually blow this up. The amount of intake air interrupted. I mean, this is freaking time saving. This is worth the money. And look at this, DTC strategy, signal check high. You could have a poor connection, open or short to power signal, open in the ground circuit and the sensor itself. It tells you the mill is on condition, two drive cycles. Diagnostic time, it looks at it continuous. Threshold voltage, 4.8. Engine speed higher than 80 RPMs. This is valuable, valuable information. Look at this other stuff they have here. Battery replacement. Okay. Tells you about the terminal ends. Okay. Clean the top of it with warm water, baking soda. They, they went through a lot of good information here. Check the post for cracks. How to replace the battery. Remove air ducts, insulation pad. This does not have any, any other notes here. Torque the bolts down. Look at that, all the torque spec. How to test the battery, okay? So to tell you with a battery tester, you know, how to tell you got a problem. And then you got things like brakes. Different procedure, okay? So this becomes a very, very powerful tool here when you're in that fix is why I wanted to show you this part. Really neat, I didn't have this before, 
I just uh, downloaded this the other day and pretty thrilled when I went to test it out, okay? So now let's get back at generic here. We did those modes. Clear, always wait to clear. We're not gonna clear anything yet. Test revolts, mode six. How many of you use mode six? So if you look at all of these, you see okay, okay, okay. But we had a problem, but not showing up on any of this. They say okay on all the mode six info because this is not looking at a comprehensive component. For argument's sake, if we did go in, you see where the tests are there and it tells you if the value is good. Of course, you got SIDS, component ID, TIDS, test ID, and um, MIDS, monitor ID. So these are testing all of those little tests they run in the background on those particular components. Think of it as a field goal. Here's the field goal. And I got to be in the middle of these poles. If I'm on this side of the pole, no good. If I'm on that side of the pole, no good. Mode 6 is something you definitely want to take a look at. Okay. So let's get out of that. Let's go on to mode 8, onboard component testing. This means here, control of onboard system on this vehicle is not available. Now this is a problem. Mode 8 is not a problem with the tool. It may be the manufacturer, and I've seen this before on Hyundai. They don't allow you to shut the vent valve. That's the only thing they did with mode 8. They were supposed to add some VVT functions, but I haven't seen that out there yet. Doesn't mean it's not coming, okay? So you should always take a peek at that. And this is important, mode 9. Mode 9... You want to look at the transmission control module. So here's the calibration. This could come in real handy. Here's the Cal ID. And the ECU name we already knew is the transmission. Now for the engine, very important. Why do you need to know this type of stuff? Look at the VIN number, make sure it's right. We did that before, I told you always do that. Calibration ID. If you're going to do an update, a reflash on this vehicle. You want to look at the manufacturer's instructions and make sure what calibration ID they are looking for. And here's in use spark performance. So basically it's showing you different counts. And you can see these counts here on an ignition cycle. You can see what's happening here with the catalyst, O2 sensors, and if you wanted, you can graph all that out. Multiple graphs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you got like 16 graphs on these pages and it says one of two, next page. You got more information there. Pretty neat. So now that we're done with generic OBD2, let's just look at some live data here and then we'll be done. Now, when we say pick a PID, I kind of like this. There's 47 parameters available of what they're saying here on this tool. If I want to look at RPM, okay, and I'm going to select all of these, and I think engine RPM should be here. Yep, engine RPM there. I want you to take a look at this right now. And you've probably seen this happen. I'm going to start the motor up. Watch the response rate. Look at the RPM number on the value and then look at the graph. Then I'm going to select all of them. When I select all of them, I want you to use your eyes and your ears to actually see what's going on. Okay, starting it up. Now you see that one up quick? You see that go up quick? Now again, I'm limited by the rev, li rev limiter, but you could all agree, when you hear it, you see it go up, right? And the screen's gonna flash on you a little bit. Nothing we can actually do with that because the vehicle is running and it sends a signal back, right? So now I'm gonna go back and I am gonna grab, whoop, I'm gonna go live data, sorry about that, and I'm gonna select all. And now I want you to look at engine RPM. So these are all bringing 
vehicle information in, and this thing, distance traveled since DTC was cleared. This had a DTC in it a while back. And notice our reds are the temperature that is changing, including EVAP, but I got to find engine RPM. Here we go. Okay. So here we're graphing RPM. You see the little bit of lag? And these guys, this is a canned vehicle. There is a little bit of lag. Depending on your scan tool and the car, these guys are doing a good job here where there's not as much lag. But I would suggest if you're using generic OBD2 or even manufacturer, this is why we've had for years did you ever see engine one, engine two, you know, EVAP, EGR? The reason why they put that in a scan tool is because of all the PID data and how the PID data can be very slow. For argument's sake, if, or for example, I should say, if you're looking at an EVAP problem on a car, you don't go to engine one. You don't go to EGR. You go to EVAP. Why? They're only picking select PIDs, parameter ID, to display with the fastest update rate. So here you're just seeing a little lag. This tool did a very good job, and the car did a good job. But many vehicles you're going to be on, you're going to hear, woo, and the graph didn't move yet. And then it moves, and it's down, you're down at idle what you're hearing. So please be aware of that, that that is an issue, okay? Pick PIDs. This one happens to be very easy to do, either by selecting all, okay, or you can unselect them and then pick what you want. Select all or unselect, and then you can go from there. So now let's back out here. This is all generic OBD2. We're going to say yes. Don't forget the VCI and it beeps at you. We're going to do the auto detect again, and look how quick this is connecting to the vehicle. Okay, so now it almost made me a liar there. It took a little longer. <laughs> We're going to go into diagnose. You know, again, it's just like using it in your shop, right? Stuff happens. We're going to hit the 16 pin. We're going to automatic. We're going to hit OK. We're going to hit USA. OK. OK in the VIN number. Um, we're going to look at the... Now we can just select what we want. I'm going to select the ECM here and the TCM. Okay. And all I'm doing is reading that. So you could do that if you want to skip out of a whole system scan. We're going to go into the ECM. Notice it came up with the two DTCs that we have there. And you can do the code search, code assist and the X431, okay? I'm just gonna hit enter here. We're processing the data. We're gonna read fault codes. We're gonna look in here and look at those codes again. We're not gonna clear them. We're gonna go back. We're gonna read data stream. So now this is gonna be data stream for the motor, okay? And as this is doing it, I know today your lunch and learn, we had a blackout here. So this is being recorded. I know some of you guys are on. And if you guys are on and you have any questions, feel free to type them in. Or if not, you could always email me. And look at this, 217. Gee, how many did we have before? Oh, that was only 41. Yeah, that's a big difference, isn't it? So if you selected everything here, select all, hit OK, and now we want graph engine RPM. Let's take another look at that, actual engine RPM. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what they can do with this tool and with this car. Now again, most of the time, okay, now notice it picked that up, the voltage went under 11, 
on a start, if you're using the tool, it wants you to know that. Me, it looks pretty quick. Yeah, this, this car and this tool are picking it up with very little lag, very little. I'm, lo I'm sure you can kind of hear the engine at about the same time. You know, it's always a little different online, but there are loads of parameters here. Look at this. So why do you go into generic? Well, you could get lost here, couldn't you? You could be looking at things that maybe don't need to concern you. This is with the drivability problem, right? An engine problem, a check engine light. Those are all the things of why you would use generic. Now, if you had something like state of function of a battery, 9.4 volts, you know, if we look into that, let's see what it says. We have it in voltage. Battery state of health is 100%. I mean, they have, this is manufacturer data that they're looking at certain things on this, this car, 214 of them to be exact. Now, we could also get out of this. We can see actuation test. An actuation test is always good. You can do the check engine lamp to see if it goes on and off, the oil change light. Fuel pump relay first stage. This means primary pump. Not sure if you're going to hear this or not. Oh, I heard that. Let me do it again. Yeah, a little hard for you to hear there. I'll, I'll go back and, and do something maybe... Let's see if this motor here. Hear that click? Hear that? So now you know that bi-directional is working. You could cut coils out. You know, whatever the manufacturer is going to give you, you can kind of do here. Now this is all in the engine part. You could play with the VVT as well on here. Um, that was actuator test, special functions. So here you could read VIN, reset adaptive values. Let's talk about that. Reset adaptive values. Well, you ever have high fuel trim readings because maybe you had a vacuum leak, bad clogged fuel filter, bad fuel pump, whatever. Sure you have. Well, what do you need to do? That's right. You're going to need to reset the adaptation, okay, or reset fuel trim. So. Let's see what it says here. Now it says engine on. I don't know if it's going to go in. It said it reset everything on that. And that would be all the engine values. Be careful doing that. Uh, you could also do a EVAP leak test. Let's kind of look at that real quick. And it would tell you here, this test is used for functional check of the EVAP system and leakage check. If you want to retry evap leak mode after this test, tells you what to do, wait five minutes. I'm going to hit OK. And it says, this test is used for functional check. If you want retry, please wait for the results message. So I have to wait. And as we're waiting, since Dorman Products and Launch were two of our sponsors at the TST big event, Launch was kind enough, and this is up to you, it's not a sales pitch, but I want you to be aware of this. You have one month from today, if you're looking at a Launch X43, uh, X431 Torque 5, normally $1,995, they have a sale for $1,799.95. There is another one here, but I don't have the right flyer. I need the other flyer with the deal as we're waiting for this. Now, if you think of getting a second scan tool, this may be the way to go. There are many other brands out there as well. Again, not a sales pitch. You come to my shop, we have probably, I don't know how many launch scan tools here, a bunch of them. But the guys like them, we use them. They do work well for us. And I want to make your job easier so you can make more money. 
And again, let's give a plug. You've seen me do a lot of stuff with Snap-on, Autel, uh, Can Do, and here is our other flyer right here. Okay, so this one here is the Millennium Max. Millennium Max normally seven ninety nine, five ninety nine ninety five. You can contact us uh, through um, TST Seminars. Uh, you can email Doreen, Doreen at TST, S-E-M-I-N-A-R-S dot org, TST Seminars dot org. And this thing is taking longer than I want. Let's get out of it. We already had a delay. Um, there are multiple functions here that you can do. And it does work. It's just, you know, time consuming here. Now, if we want to go into anything else, let's go back uh, to running the health report and go see what we have for airbag. I think there was airbag codes and voltage codes. And again, do the first one, the health check. Because everything that's coming up, you can see SRS is an issue. We got one code in each of those modules. We're about a little more than halfway done there. It's scanning through the system. And we're almost done, and then we're gonna click on them to make sure. We already seen the ECM one, so I'm not gonna click down there. And again, this is great that you can look at this and then take this report to help sell the customer something that is needed on their vehicle. You don't want your customer going out not knowing. So let's hit the first one. It says we had a battery voltage low. Let's see what we got. Code assist. Okay, and it's just going into the data stream for code assist. Let's go back here. Let's go if there's X431 fix. And basically one result, battery low, and it's gonna give you, look at that. It's gonna tell you what to look for. Component location, description, okay. So you can see what's going on. The supplementary system here, SRS, check inputs, ignition on, check battery voltage. This is taking you right to where you wanna be and gives you the information here. Pretty neat, pretty neat. So let's go back one here and let's go to this other one. Same thing, battery voltage low. I'm sure being an airbag thing, it's gonna kind of give us the same bit of information. And even though it's a different code. So yeah, very similar info there because it's a very similar code. And then we're gonna go, let's do this one here and see what we got for code search. There's some stuff that pulls you to right on the internet. Oh, not that silly. Code assist. Ignition voltage low. And it's gonna take you in to read the fault code and let's go to the X431 information here. And unfortunately, there's nothing on that one. And that's sometimes what's going to happen. So you have a bunch of information here that you can go into. Now, if we're looking at engine info, we're going to go back into the engine. Oh, no, you know what? Hold on. Let's go here to ABS. Let's go in the ABS system here and to make sure there's no fault codes. So this car is not going to be hard to do anything with. And we're going to look at clearing those codes out, see if they come back. Okay. Question? I think it's going to shut down. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're still recording. Okay, so we'll cut that part. Here we can look at the motor. We can put the motor on. Now you hear that? That's the ABS motor 
actually operating. And that is something you'd want to do if you had an issue where you thought the motor wasn't working or the outlet valve left front. It should make a noise. Yeah, a little hard for you guys to hear out there because I could barely hear it here. Shuttle right front. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that one I didn't even hear. So, And it warns you that you got to hit stop before you can go back. Pretty cool there. Uh, special functions. Now, brake pad mode. So a lot of things that you may not even realize that you may have to do. Auto detection configuration. Got a lot of good information here. You got air bleed mode, brake pad change mode. So it says before changing brake pads, this function should be performed. This will allow you to push the piston into the caliper by retracting the spindle nut with the actuator. While the pad change mode is in progress, text message is displayed at the cluster. After changing the brake pads, apply release function should be executed three times. So you may have a problem trying to push the piston in because this is using like a screw type setup. So you always need to look at service mission, uh, information, all data, pro demand, you know, Identifix, Motologic, and this gives you info right in the tool, which is pretty, pretty damn cool, right? Pretty cool. Let's look at a different system. Uh, let's look at the BCM, because this may give us the horn blowing and all that, that you will have a, uh, we always make sure there's no codes in there first, no trouble codes. We go back, hit the back button. Let's do an actuator test. Wiper relay, gotta make sure my wipers are clear. Let's put the wipers on. There's the wipers. So the wipers work. This is why you'd want to use bi-directional. Now, if it works from the scan tool, let's explain something here. Let's That was a buzzer. But if you hit bi-directional and something is working, but it's not working through the vehicle itself, you what do you look for? You're proving here by going through the scan tool that the scan tool can communicate with the BCM in this case or ECM or PCM or TCM, whatever module you're dealing with. What you're really looking at is the sensor that would turn that particular component on is not sending the information to the computer. Because if your scan tool could allow those wipers for argument's sake to come on, that means the command is sent to the computer, the computer and the wiring and the motor going out, they're all working. You have a sensor problem, a sensor or a switch problem. Maybe the switch is no good. Maybe if you had automatic rain detection, that sensor is not working as designed. Let's look at special, special functions. This has something called user options and Let's see, auto lock state. Oh, you could disable stuff here. We're not going to do that. Um, arm disarm buzzer. If you don't like something, you can take it off. Headlight escort enabled. So if you wanted it disabled when you leave the vehicle, you would hit the disabled. I'm going to go back and put headlight discord. Uh, Escort back on, that way it is set, and make sure you save it. And we could go on and on with what you can do from a scan tool, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the key off, plug in the sensor that we disconnected there, okay? But we don't want to plug and unplug with a key on. Not that a sensor would make a huge problem, okay? But if you did that with an actuator, you could actually do something 
to the computer, okay? So key is off, I am plugging back in. Okay, make sure it's in good. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna clear codes. But I'm gonna turn the key on first so we can communicate. Okay, key's back on. Let me back out. And we're gonna run through real quick, just that whole system, and then I'm gonna hit a clear. So we're running through, just to see if anything changed with that ECM, would it plugged in, would it clear itself? No, nope. it looks like it came back immediately. We're doing the upper ones, and then we're gonna clear all the DTCs out to see if we have a problem or not, okay? So let's see, we're almost done. Three quarters through. Okay, and if there's any questions, you can email me at gt at attstraining.com. That's gt at attstraining.com. I will be traveling, so uh, don't think you'll get an email back right away, but I'll be more than glad to email you back as soon as I get there. So now we're gonna hit clear DTCs. Now I'm gonna clear them, and then this should all turn green unless we got a problem. And notice the, en the engine one cleared out immediately. The uh, SRS is clearing out. Now we still have the occupant. Let's see what happens there. And then we'll just start it up to make sure that there is not an issue with uh, the engine thing there. Now, o OCS did not clear out just yet. So we still got something in there. We're gonna take a look at that DTC. Up, oh, cleared out, okay. So it just had to go back in, how it's all there. Now we are all green. We do a report. We hit okay. And we hit okay. It emails us the report. Okay, and you can put post repair, but you can see everything is clear. I just didn't select post repair, big deal, right? So we are good, I'm just gonna start it up. Let's see if anything comes with that ECM and then uh, we'll entertain any of your questions, go over a few things. We do have a Dorman Lunch and Learn heavy duty that is on when, Doreen, next Wednesday, I think? Yeah, I think it is. Check, Dorman uh, and, and us will be sending out. We got no lights on here. Everything looks good. And we're good on the scan tool. Just to make sure, we'll go up and down. Screen is here. And this is pretty much ready to go. Now that being said, a scan tool could save us a lot of time, right? A scan tool could save us a whole bunch of time. You need the right equipment. You need the right game plan. Go in if you have drivability. Once again, I want you to go into generic OBD2. Then you could go in and you see how I went into this tool first. I did that whole scan. That way we get it out of the way. And that's what we do here. Whether we're using launch or Autel or Snap-on, okay, we check everything on the car. Customer may not be aware they got a infotainment problem. They have an ABS problem, okay? They came in because the check engine light maybe is on or maybe they had to come in for an inspection. Always check the whole vehicle out. That way you can give the consumer the report to make sure that they know what's going on, right? So we have, uh, for TST, we have Ken Zanders. He'll be doing something with scan tools. You'll see that information up on tstseminars.org. Uh, that is a webinar, April the 6th, a Thursday night, not a Wednesday night because uh, I'm not around to run it from my end, but Kenny will be doing that. This is virtual, so that means it'll be online. TST members can get this as low as $20, non-members $40. Come check it out at tstseminars.org. Upcoming instructors, May to June, we got Scott Brown and Brandon Steckler. 
and uh, we will be doing a locksmith thing uh, with Tyler. That'll be coming up in September. We're planning on that one. There'll be a couple of round tables that are totally free for everyone. Uh, that'll be sometime in July and August. Always check the TST website out. And we will have another Dorman Lunch and Learn. So any questions, what are you going to do with them? GT at attstraining.com. That's GT at attstraining.com. We appreciate your time coming out. We hope this has been helpful. Uh, give us some ideas on what you would like to see coming up, okay? We do have some other different things that we think are pretty cool. Uh, let us know if you'd like to see something with a factory scan tool. If you'd like to see something on brakes, give us some thoughts what you would like to see. And if you missed our Tesla one from last month, always go to the Dorman website or you can go to the ATTS training website. On the videos, go down and you'll see Dorman Lunch and Learn 2023. The handout will be there and you can look at all of them. There's 2022 up as well. We want to thank you for attending. Sorry about the electricity, but hey, only the man upstairs. I only got the G and half an O, right? The man upstairs, God, he controls all that. We're not sure what happened, but we appreciate you coming back to check this video out. We'll see you next month with another Dorman Lunch and Learn, both with heavy duty and light duty. Thank you again. Have a great day. See you next month.